Herzlich willkommen zum Vortragsteil des Digital Future Friday. Ich hoffe, Sie konnten den Tag nutzen, um die Company Info Points in unserem Ausstellungsbereich zu besuchen. Wenn nicht, schauen Sie doch gleich nach den Vorträgen noch einmal vorbei. Die auf den Ständen angebotenen Inhalte stehen Ihnen zwar noch bis zum 8. November zur Verfügung, aber Live-Chats mit den Vertretern der ausstellenden Unternehmen sind nur heute am Digital Future Friday bis 17 Uhr möglich. Analog zu den Erfordernissen in der wirklichen Welt haben wir auch in unserem virtuellen Auditorium die Abstände zwischen den Stühlen vergrößert. Masken müssen allerdings nicht getragen werden, auch nicht von Ihnen, wenn Sie mit unseren Rednern sprechen möchten. Das können Sie im Anschluss an jeden Vortrag ganz einfach über Ihre Tastatur tun. Gegen Ende eines Vortrages wird sich auf Ihrem Bildschirm ein Chat öffnen, in welchem Ihnen die Rednerin oder der Redner für einige Minuten Rede und Antwort steht, bevor wir zum nächsten Vortrag kommen. Nun aber zum ersten Beitrag, zu dem wir gleich zwei hochkompetente und international renommierte Redner begrüßen dürfen. Dave Fabry und Arkel Giorgio werden gemeinsam zum Thema Artificial Intelligence, also künstliche Intelligenz, vortragen. Die beiden in unserer Branche vorzustellen, ist ein wenig wie Eulen nach Athen zu tragen. Daher nur einige sehr kurze Daten. Dr. Arkel Giorgio ist Chief Health Officer für Starkey Hearing Technologies. Sie ist verantwortlich für Starkeys Initiative zur Verbesserung des Wohlbefindens und der Lebensqualität von Nutzern von Hörsystemen. Akel ist eine Medizinerin, die nicht nur seit vielen Jahren sehr profiliert in Medizin, Forschung und Industrie, sondern auch in der Öffentlichkeit wirkt. So hat sie unter anderem eine eigene wöchentliche Fernsehsendung, in der sie Menschen hilft, aufgeklärte Gesundheitsentscheidungen zu treffen. Dr. Dave Fabry ist ebenfalls bei Starkey Hearing Technologies, als Chief Innovation Officer verantwortlich für die Innovationen innerhalb der klinischen Audiologie. Dave ist ein Audiologe, der seit vielen Jahren erfolgreich in den verschiedensten Kontexten wirkt, ob in der Medizin, der Forschung oder der Industrie. Als ehemaliger Präsident der American Academy of Audiology und Mitglied ihres Verwaltungsrates ist Dave einer der profiliertesten Audiologen der Vereinigten Staaten. Wir freuen uns also, Arkel und ihn zu begrüßen und wir sind gespannt auf Ihre Erläuterungen, wie man künstliche Intelligenz für patientenzentrierte Hörversorgung nutzbar macht. Der Titel Putting the AI in Patient-Centered Hearing Healthcare. Hello, I'm Dr. Arkel Giorgio, Starkey's Chief Health Officer. Dr. Dave Fabry, our Chief Innovation Officer, and I are going to talk about the current trends in healthcare, hearing healthcare. I'm going to talk about the clinical trends, and he's going to focus on the technology trends that address those opportunities. So trend number one is that COVID-19 is exacerbating the impact of hearing impairment. We know that individuals with hearing impairment have communication challenges, but add to that what we're facing with masks, with social distancing, and with the sound distortion that occurs with the endless Zoom meetings, and that situation becomes even worse. But not only is it difficult to communicate with friends and colleagues, family members, and loved ones during this time, but it's also difficult to communicate with doctors, nurses, and care providers to help coordinate and manage and actively participate in the care plan for the many conditions and comorbidities that are associated with hearing loss. How do you advocate for yourself when you're contemplating a major surgery or thinking about taking a medication that could have significant side effects? How do you engage as an active participant in your healthcare when you can't hear? Maybe a small silver lining with COVID-19 is that individuals with mild hearing loss who tried to ignore their hearing impairment before are no longer able to ignore this disability and are starting to go down the path of this journey in order to address it. Trend number two, loneliness is finally being recognized and prioritized as a public health issue. From New Zealand and Australia to Europe, to the United States. Loneliness is a global health crisis, and this is even before COVID-19. It affects one in five individuals with hearing loss and 35% of individuals over the age of 35. 
Let me be clear that loneliness is not just about solitude, which many of us appreciate. Loneliness is a perception of being alone. Loneliness is a perception of not having anyone to turn to. And loneliness is toxic. Why? Because as humans, we are meant to be with other people. And when we aren't, it is a threat to our survival. So loneliness triggers a fight or flight reaction, a flood of cortisol to the human body that can have devastating long-term effects. Long-term effects that when sustained can create risks for depression, stroke, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, and maybe one of the most devastating, which is dementia. And a slight bit of optimism on loneliness. Hearing loss is one of the only reversible root causes and risk factors for loneliness. And trend number three, research linking hearing loss and dementia is strengthening. For some time, for several years, we've heard that there is a strong correlation between hearing impairment and dementia. And there is a dose-response relationship. The more hearing loss, the higher the risk of dementia. So much so that even with mild hearing loss, the risk of dementia doubles. The amount of research is becoming so profound that the Lancet Commission on Dementia 2020 recently published a report showing the 12 modifiable risk factors for dementia that contribute to about 40% of this condition. Not only is hearing loss on the list of 12 modifiable risk factors, it is the largest contributor to the modifiable risk factors that exists. So what does it mean to be a modifiable risk factor? Especially when talking to patients, it's important to bring this to life to them. So I think that this study from JAMA Otolaryngology in 2018 really tells a very important story. Let me set up the slide so that you understand it. On the slide, the dark line on the top is the average memory score of individuals without hearing loss at all. Any scores that occur below that line would indicate a memory deficit. In this study, there were two groups of patients. They all had the same degree of hearing loss, but one group wore hearing aids and the other group did not wear hearing aids. So let's take a look at the memory deficits of individuals that did not wear hearing aids. You can see some deficit in the group with mild hearing loss, a much greater deficit in those with moderate to severe hearing loss. Now let's take a look at the group of individuals, same degree of hearing loss, but who wore hearing aids. The degree of memory deficit in the group of individuals wearing hearing aids is insignificant and really not extremely different than the individuals with completely normal hearing. There is a wealth of data, a wealth of knowledge that shows the profound impact that treating hearing loss can have not only on quality of life, but on quality of health. So with that, I'm gonna to transition to Dr. Dave Favory, who will highlight some of the technology advances that can address these opportunities. Thank you, Dr. Giorgio. I want to now transition from the bigger, larger issue of the problem to the way that hearing aid technology has been transitioning in recent years from a single purpose device designed to treat a single condition, hearing loss, to this larger issue where the interdependencies to other important health conditions, as Arkel just discussed, are being addressed by technology. Not only are hearing aids capable of connecting directly to smartphones, but now through the use of embedded sensors, machine learning, and artificial intelligence, we're seeing hearing aid devices challenge conventional wisdoms related to what a hearing loss is as an isolation and what modern hearing aids can do. And looking at that healthable strategy and then also the way that they're connecting to the cloud and really the World Wide Web is providing exciting ways to combat those issues of loneliness, to address that issue of 
the link between hearing loss and cognitive decline and really focus on the ways that we can use machine learning, artificial intelligence to connect hearing to the larger ecosystem, if you will, of overall health and wellness and really provide this gateway, if you will, into first and foremost ensuring that people who wear hearing aids can hear better and live better but then also provide that connection to physical activity and social engagement and also provide them with a way to stay mentally sharp and focused and involve family members, professional caregivers in their rehabilitation as they're wearing hearing aids. So uh, one of the things that Arkel mentioned is, is that COVID-19 has changed the way that we uh, address issues and, and what we've had to do and the speed of innovation has had to accelerate because now many of us, even with normal hearing, are finding that communicating with other individuals who are wearing face masks is difficult. The, the combination of social distancing, the use of face masks, background noise, and even the loss of visual cues necessary for lip reading are complicating communication. And it's a perfect opportunity for us to bring in machine learning and artificial intelligence as a solution for those challenges, those communication challenges presented by the combination of different face masks. So I wanna go through and just articulate a couple ways that we've measured in our laboratories these challenges. First, the impact of social distancing. What we've looked at is in the U.S., the traditional uh, distance between talkers and listeners are approximately one meter. And if we move that to now two meters dif uh, distance, what we see is the reduction in the long-term average speech levels, which are shown in this graphic, declined by about six dB, maybe even a little bit more in the high frequency. So right off the bat, we're seeing the attenuation of speech by about six decibels. Then the second issue is, is that all face masks are not created the same. We've tested many of the popular medical grade masks, the N95 masks that you hear about, as well as the, uh, the fabric masks and the increasingly popular ones that include either clear plastic for the entire mask or a plastic uh, region that allows lip reading uh, cues to be preserved while individuals are wearing face masks. And what we've seen and what is shown in this graphic here is that while all reduce speech in the high frequencies, to varying degrees, they have impact on the amount of reduction that occurs. And even if you look interestingly at the clear plastic panel, which is shown in the, in the key on the lower right hand side, it actually creates a resonance that enhances speech in some of the mid frequencies, but then pays the price like resonances do in the high frequencies declining by eight decibels. So all face masks are not the same and any mask mode program that might be used that is a, a, a consistent offset would be challenged by the fact that depending on the type of mask that is used in combination with that social distancing, we'll see varying degrees of reduction that will not be optimized by a single offset. So it seems like an ideal opportunity to use artificial intelligence to focus relentlessly on assessing uh, a listening environment to ensure audibility, which doesn't guarantee intelligibility, but audit audibility is necessary, not sufficient for intelligibility. AI can be used to analyze an environment, take an acoustic snapshot, and independent of whether a person is socially distanced, by the degree to which they're socially distanced, whether they're wearing a mask, what type of mask, and also the presence of noise if it is relentlessly focused on providing only those signal processing features appropriate to that specific environment, it can optimize to the degree that is possible audibility. And so I want to uh, play for you three uh, audio demonstrations, brief audio demonstrations uh, in the next three slides. What you'll hear first is a condition that is a challenging uh, speech and noise task. You'll hear the rainbow passage, commonly used because it represents most of the uh, different phonetic symbols uh, necessary for understanding English. And uh, what you'll hear is a female talker in the presence of noise when no mask is worn. 
Even for those with normal hearing, I think you'll find that that was a challenging passage. Now, let's listen to what happens when a face mask is worn, like the medical grade N95 mask in this sample. Everything else is the same, but the mask and, and what I want you to listen to are the high-pitched, high-frequency, fricative components of speech are reduced considerably. Now, the final condition, we applied artificial intelligence to increase and identify the presence of speech in noise and compensate for the presence of the mask that is in place. What I want you to listen for are whether those high frequency fricative components of speech are more audible than in the previous example. The rainbow is a division of white light into many beautiful colors. Please take the shape of a long round arch with its path high above and its two ends apparently beyond the horizon. Even though that remains a challenging speech and noise task, I hope that through your speakers or your headphones, you could hear clearly that using AI to draw out that speech in that uh, final condition was an improvement over the previous two conditions. I would argue that in terms of audibility, it was actually easier to understand than the first condition when no mask was worn. This graphic actually shows that if you look at the first condition represented by the zero line on this graphic, no mask in that challenging environment, and compare that to the condition when a face mask was worn and we were not using AI to enhance speech and showing that attenuation in the high frequencies, the final condition where AI was applied actually enhances the speech in the low frequencies and in the high frequencies reference to no mask at all. While AI can't currently be used to uh, detect and optimize for the loss of those lip reading uh, cues, a little bit of improvement in audibility can at least provide a good running chance that the understandability will be easier when uh, that uh, artificial intelligence is applied to optimize speech audibility. Now, I want to talk briefly about a couple other ways that we're seeing trends in terms of the application of processing power, artificial intelligence, uh, to address the speech and noise problem, which remains the most significant one for most hearing aid users. For the first time, we're starting to see deep neural network AI be applied as the next logical extension where we take the processing available on the hearing aids and commingle that with the processing power of smartphones. Given that most modern hearing aids are now connected to smartphones, we can use that computing power provided by the smartphone to take additional uh, computational power and put it in the device and communicate that between the phone and the hearing instruments. This can increasingly provide opportunities for sound quality and speech intelligibility in noise, and I think we're going to see major trends with that combination and coordination between the hearing aid as a standalone device and the smartphone. The last thing, as Arkel mentioned, is the engagement between the hearing aid user their family members and professional caregivers. And we're beginning to see the application of companion apps that with permission of the hearing aid user can allow family members to motivate their hearing aid users to be more physically active, to be more socially engaged and to really help them on this pathway, this gateway to health and wellness that hearing aids now provide. So in summary, as Arkel began, the research is strengthening on the link between hearing loss and dementia. We're finally recognizing that loneliness is a significant societal and health issue. And then COVID-19 has presented opportunities as well as challenges for accelerating the innovation provided by hearing aids to engage with the hearing aid user and enable them to communicate better during this pandemic. And then finally, we're seeing that with this trend of the augmented self, it is also providing us with innovation opportunities to connect the hearing aid user, their family member, and even professional caregivers to hear better and live better. Hearing is essential now more than ever. And we thank you very much for your time.